Uh, good morning, student. My name is Yuna Kariwo, and I'm your tutor for the subject Learner Development and Learning. Uh, this um, presentation uh, session is for the 2018 assignments, and this is specifically for the students that are taking a Learner Development and Learning as a module for the, the ones that are doing the course ACS, ACP, DE, DES, and DSE. And of course, the students that are also taking the BES. All right. So uh, this session will discuss uh, what you are expected to do for your assignments for the 2018 session. All right. Let's look uh, more information on, on on what you can you should expect for this assignment. The assignment is going to be out of 120 marks. There are basically four questions in this assignment, and you are expected to answer all four questions. The study guide to use in this case is the, the learner development and, learn, and learning study guides. I'm sure you are provided with that at your uh, centers where you find yourselves at. And then, of course, uh, please, you are free to use any other um, the textbook or guide or information. It can be on the internet, it can be the library, any information that discusses um, the, the topic of learner development and learning in, in, in education. You you are um, you can actually find a lot of information on learner development and learning in, in most of the textbooks on that discusses education in all the theories of education. Okay, what should we expect in question one? You should uh, consider the following uh, questions to be under question one. Uh, the first question will be on the on the definition of the concepts such as uh, toddler, infant, growth, culture, development domain, fine motor skills, and all those things. So um, please. Uh, try to discuss these questions, give their definitions, if possible, um, discuss further on what is meant by an infant, what is meant by a toddler, how do they differ, what is an infant, what is a toddler. You can give an example. Uh, the issue of culture. Uh, Namibia, we are a, a diverse cultural country. We have diverse cultures. Within our cultures, again, we are still having more and more diverse cultures. So it's very interesting to discuss culture within the Namibian context. You can always give an example of, of culture. And most of us, even if you live in a very remote village in Namibia, you are still having a lot of diversity in your culture. They, so you can discuss that, giving you your own examples of, of culture. For example, in Gatima, Malino, where I come from, we are having a, a, a different um, languages that we do speak in one region, a very small region, but we have a lot of diverse cultures there as well. You can discuss that as an example. And um, you look at the issue of development domain, what are the development domains that that one should go through for them to to have achieved growth, discuss those development domains, find motor skills that most learners go through, children go through, discuss what are the motor or uh, find motor skills, and you should please outline them thoroughly. Uh, you are also expected please read further on the concepts of toddlers and infants, like I said earlier, and how they compare with one another. You can compare what's a toddler and what's an infant. For some of us who are mothers, when we talk about a toddler and an and infant, we know already, even if you are not a mother, I'm not discriminating the men, even for the for the men who are fathers or who are fathers-to-be or who are mothers-to-be, I'm not discriminating anyone. I'm just giving an example that it might be easier for a mother who is actually a mother to an infant right now or a mother to a toddler. Okay, so you can actually discuss Please use your textbooks in these discussions. Don't let the discussions be out of topic to start to use them. But then you should compare how does a, a toddler differ from an infant. For example, you would do hear people talk about uh, my, my, my child is two and, and um, he's going through the terrible tools. We know how a two-year-old behaves. You see them in shops and how they behave. That is very common for, for, for those are what we call toddlers. And we know why we call them the terrible tools, of course. Uh, and of course, of course, an infant can be someone who's six months old or, or a, a three month baby. That's an infant. How does that differ from a two year old who's, who's a toddler? And explain and compare with each other. Use examples in your discussion, and more the the use of examples will, will give you more marks. I'll go on that question too. Uh, the explanation of concepts like immunization, parasitic diseases, and good nutrition. Explain this concept. What do we mean when you say you, you, you have an immunization or you are immunized? What are parasitic diseases and what is good nutrition? What, what, when, when do you say you are having good nutrition? 
this exam should be elaborated further in with real life examples you can give good examples of what we mean by people who, are, who have access to good nutrition what are their life expectancies how do they their bodies respond to illnesses and such things what does good immunization do for you as a, as a human being as a person when a country has got 100 percent immunization against all preventable illnesses how is it good for them how does it react for them and how do they do does it, it make it better for them how does things like infant mortality rate life expectancy how is it influenced by issues of immunization the, like i said already please use these examples with real life examples um then we come on to the last part of question two, which says uh, discuss the theories of motivation how does motivation help the learner learn in an effective method when you are discussing this essay on motivation i would like you please to start off by giving the the definition of what is meant by motivation and then you look at all the theories of motivation we got extrinsic motivation intrinsic motivation how does it differ how does it help how does it make one learn better how does it make one not learn please discuss these things thoroughly uh, of, of course use examples i move on to question three okay excuse me in question three, please consider the following points. Identify an emotionally abused learner in your classroom. How can this be done? Discuss all possible ways. Um, when you are discussing these questions, of course, if you do have any 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 learner in your class that you can identify as a, as an emotionally abused learner and use it in your as an, in your example, please do not use names. We want it to be as um, respectful for the for the whole learner as, as possible for the whole teaching and learning process to take place uh if there's now if you have not yet i um come across a, an emotionally abused learner in your classroom or you are not yet in the classroom yourself as a student you can use your your you can use an imaginary uh, uh learner that you think might be emotionally abused of course you are basing this on on, on relevant uh, discussions from textbooks from books from your study guides you can say how can what can be done according to your to your literature on, on the topic of, of, of emotionally abused learner. How can you as a teacher, how can you help this learner? What should be done in your classroom? What are the possible things that can be done for you as a teacher in the classroom, for the whole school as a school, for the whole uh, school management, for the parents, for involving all the relevant people involved, your, your, your life skills teacher, your school counselor, your regional school counselor, how can they all be involved in helping this emotionally abused learner that you've identified in your classroom? What can be done for them? And then the last part of question three, you look at the common barriers to teaching, how they affect the teaching and learning process. What are the barriers? What are the obstacles that 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 hinders learn, uh, learning and teaching to take place that keep us from achieving effective teaching and learning in our classroom? What are those barriers? Discuss them. And not only do you identify them and discuss them, you also uh, discuss how they affect teaching and learning process. How do these barriers affect the teaching and learning process? Discuss that as well. We go on to question four. Uh, question four, you should consider the following points promote self-concept of, of of learners in the classroom how it affects the teaching and learning process self-concept in in, in 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 the classroom how does it affect teaching and learning how do the learners regard themselves that self-concept of learners how do they regard themselves how do they look at themselves and and, and look at the whole themselves at, as a learner in, in the teaching and learning environment how does this affect the teaching and learning process do, do they view themselves as 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 learners or as as people who are able to achieve and learn or do they look at themselves as they are not able if they, do, they don't regard themselves as worthy of learning or they are not as good as other learners all these things you discuss and how does that affect the whole teaching and learning process and then we come to the discussion of hiv and AIDS transmission and, and then transmission modes and then you should discuss this trans hiv and AIDS transmission modes we know that um for example um the number one co the number one cause of, of HIV and AIDS transmission in Africa, for instance, is the is unprotected heterosexual sex, which really leads to high high instances of, of transmission of the disease. There are many other ways in which HIV and AIDS can be transmitted. We have got the, uh, someone receiving contaminated blood through blood blood transfusion can also be one way. 
uh, when when mother and child during uh, child birth delivery or during um, breastfeeding, if the mother is not taking in, in ARV medication or they've not um, gone through therapy of ARVs, that can also be one way in which HIV and AIDS can be transmitted. There are, there are many several other ways that you can discuss. Uh, please discuss these um, modes and uh, give practical examples on how HIV and AIDS can be transmitted. Your study guides give a lot of information on these issues and you can also find a lot of information on the internet. You can google up UN AIDS. UN AIDS um, has a lot of information on HIV AIDS, on all aspects of HIV information. You can Google up the World Health Organization uh, PDF documents over the net. You can find a lot of information on HIV and AIDS uh, if you do not want to discuss with the ones in your textbooks. Um, we have the issue of deep and surface learning, a discussion on the pros and the cons. Um, what is surface learning? What is this? Started the essay by discussing what is meant by deep learning, what is surface learning, how do they differ, what is the advantage of having deep learning, what is the disadvantage of deep learning, what are the advantages of, of surface learning, what are the advantages of surface learning, each and everything there has got its own advantages or disadvantages. The word pros just means advantages and cons are the disadvantages. That is the end of the, the discussion on, on this guy, on the, on the assignment. For this specific um, module, I'm going to give some general information on how you should uh, write your assignments. If you have questions or are not so sure how you should write your assignments, please, I will do recommend that you should type all your assignments, even, even though not everyone has access to the resources of typing the assignments, but we do recommend you do type your assignments. Once you have typed your you start typing your assignment, please use the uh, Times New Roman in font 12, 1.5 spacing, justify your assignments, do not just copy and paste from sources. You should answer the question. While you are answering this question, always ask yourself, are you still answering the question or like not out of the topic? Debate on how you are answering these questions. Do not copy and paste so information from sources, but you should debate and deliberate on those questions. Uh, whilst you are, co you, are, you, are, you are getting information from other sources, please, you, you are required to actually um, use a in-text referencing in your in your assignment, uh, acknowledge the use of information from other sources, uh, you reference your work at the end of your assignment as well and use the APA referencing style. Use practical examples, local examples in your discussion is very important. Um, my cell phone number is 081-2851-424. I can always attend to your questions when I do not get a chance to answer your calls. I can always call you back. You can leave. You can send the text via cell phone. You can send an email. I can sort of respond to your email. Yes, I can even respond to your WhatsApp message for those of you on WhatsApp. This is the end of my presentation, and good luck with the whole assignment 18. Thank you.